uh, four years in college and I hated going to the gym. And the closest thing for me to kind of heal myself besides going to physical therapy every day, which wasn't an option, was to try yoga, um, Tai Chi and Pilates. And I ended up sticking with yoga and, and loved it. And not only did it take care of me physically with all the injuries I have, um, but deep down I was having this reckoning of, of healing myself. I, at the time, I wouldn't have called it that. I just didn't know what was happening, but I knew that something needed to be addressed and change and maybe unearth some of my, I don't want to say skeletons, but now there's a word, right? We can label it as trauma. And um, yoga tended to do all of that. And I just thought, what the hell is going on? I feel incredible. I feel grounded. I feel good. My stuff is coming up, but I feel safe. And um, physically, I just felt so fit and mentally so sharp. And then spiritually, um, I was starting to have an awakening of sorts. And I could uh, tie it all back to yoga. And I thought, man, I could do this till I'm 80. And I thought, I'm going to teach this one day. And I thought maybe I would teach it when I retired from my career. <laughs> and little did I know that a couple years later, I'd have an opportunity after 9-11 to go to a, a, a teacher training. And I've been doing it ever since. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Now, when you were first starting to explore the field of yoga, what were the major demographics that you were seeing, in, including your teachers? Mm -hmm. and My students? teacher was, was a white woman, but I started doing yoga in Pittsburgh. I live in Denver. I was in Pittsburgh because I went to school out there. Um, even though she was a white woman, I could definitely classify her as working class, blue collar, um, a woman who had struggled in her life. Um, and so I feel like I really connected to her for the first time. I felt like, oh, one-on-one, -on -one, I, I knew I could be vulnerable with her and kind of let my guard down. And I started doing classes with her in a group setting for a couple of months. And then I moved and I still wanted her as a teacher. So I was super lucky to have her in my life for at least a year and a half where she came to my home and taught me private lessons at least three or four mm -hmm. days a week for about almost two years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then it, my practice just took off from there. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she really invested in you. Oh, yeah. And vice versa. I, I think we really saw each other. And as much as people thought it was crazy to be doing yoga or meditating, <laughs> you know, because it was very different then. And I was very open to it. I was from Colorado. I grew up in Boulder, very tree hugging. At the time, I was a vegetarian. I didn't drink, you know, so it just really aligned with me. We're two weirdos kind of communing <laughs> together to practice yoga. That's what I said before it got popular and commercialized and, you know, um, we just understood each other. We got it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And before you got started, or I guess as you were getting started, did you have any hesitations or concerns about doing yoga in a public place? Um, no. Okay. No, it just felt right. For the first time, everything just aligned. I mean, I had grown up with my parents being spiritual people. And when I say spiritual, um, I mean, via religion, I would literally as a child go to two or three different types of churches every Sunday because my parents were seeking for something mm -hmm. spiritual. Yeah, uh, They were also very invested in the community. You know, um, my father started a minor league baseball league here in Denver. So, you know, athletics, spirituality, but nothing was connecting. And so um, yoga really connected that for me. When I say athletics, I mean the hatha, the physical form of yoga, mm -hmm. a way to stay healthy and present. And then it took care of the spiritual aspects, the spirituality aspects without me tying my spirituality to a religion or to a, a building a place of worship. You know, yeah. so it all came together all at the same time. And for the first time as an adult, it felt right. Mm. It felt right. Yeah. I mean, 
I would walk into a Catholic church and be a little triggered, like seeing Jesus up there, you know, like scaring me. I'm like, what's going on here? This is the <laughs> If you feel safe, why do I feel so scared and the smells of churches? I'm like, this is really weird. But no, yoga tied it all together and it made a lot of sense. It just resonated with me. I felt safe. I felt comforted as I worked through my stuff. And um, yeah, that's the best word I can describe is that it just felt right, that I was at the right place at the right time healing myself. And I felt super safe. Yes, yes. Okay. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yoga does it does do that. Mm-hmm. Now within I guess the overall studio space, I know that you talked a little bit about the instructor making you feel welcome. And then this also doesn't have to be limited to that um specific studio or place mm-hmm. where you um we're primarily taking yoga classes but and looking back did you were there any times where you felt uncomfortable in the studio space I have then, and I would say that's more recent just because um okay. when you what you heard me say to you and as I express myself I keep saying you know I, I started doing yoga practicing yoga teaching it before it was cool right mm-hmm. once it got <laughs> cool I don't want to mean cool it's like Everyone knew about it, whether it was commercial marketing, and then it got cool, then Lululemon and all the clothes and all that, and then studios started to pop up everywhere. Then I think that's when it got kind of, um, I guess, disheartening and concerning. Studios started to pop up everywhere, and then I realized, ooh, let's take a look. Where are these studios located? Very affluent neighborhoods in Colorado, super expensive places, right? And luckily, because I was a teacher, I either got to practice for free or, or highly, highly, highly discounted places, you know, where maybe a drop in was five bucks for me, you know? Okay. And then I started to look around and think it's changed. It now feels like a country club, right? And I, um, I say the word country club where it's, stereotypical very exclusive right the exclusivity of it being so expensive now only allows a particular demographic to show up and practice Are you there? Hello? You're breaking up. 